Hello everybody and welcome to PM Studios C Sharp Tutorials number 3. Today I am going to be going over strings a little bit deeper in depth than I did in the last tutorial. Um, today we will be going over the actual string method so that you can uh, get a general idea of all the different, or actually rather the string library, so you can get a general idea of all the different things you can do with the string. And um, I will also go over some of the unique benefits of IntelliSense at the same time. This should not be a very long tutorial, just as a forewarning. I'm not going to go too deep into it. It's just going to be a very simple program with which we are going to build on with the next three or four tutorials. So go ahead and get ready to go. As you can see, I've already created my, um, my new uh, project here, my new project solution, and I have named it String Practice, as you can see, Strings Practice right here. Um, it created the namespace, the program for me, the static main void, and it also gave me the braces, which I put in a space and then indented so that we can go ahead and get started with our formatting rule that we've been using up till now. So let's go ahead and get started with three strings. Our first one is going to be first name. Next one is going to be last name. And the last one is going to be full name. As you can probably guess right now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the user enter their first and their last name, and then we're going to concatenate them so that they become one string, and then we're going to return that name. And from there, we'll go ahead and build on it so this becomes a pseudo-complex program by the time we're done with the next three tutorials. So let's go ahead and start with a console dot right line. We're going to go, please enter your first name. Then we're going to go first name, as you can guess, equals console dot read line. And always remember to put your semicolons and this should also, the semicolons should also be the number one thing that you look for when you're debugging your program to see what you might have done wrong and what's causing the errors because a lot of times people will just move on like this, especially myself, um, and will forget to put the semicolons there and then it's bad news bears when you're trying to hunt through 50 to, you know, 50 to 250 lines of code trying to find that one little error when all you were really missing was a semicolon. So let's go ahead and do another console here real quick. Right line, again. I'm going to go, please enter your last name. Now for those of you who uh, have gone through my Java programming series, uh, we will not be implementing error handling um, like we were doing at the very end um, until later on in this series. I think it's going to be around tutorial number 12. I have, that may be subject to change. But um, the reason why is because for those of the people who have not seen the Java programming series, I'm actually trying to build you up so that you don't get overwhelmed with everything and you know feel like you're missing out on something because you didn't see my other series. So again, we're doing console dot readline. And of course, IntelliSense comes up once you type in the first few letters, and you can automatically have it choose what you want from that list. Or you can just put the console dot, and it'll give you all of the options that go with console, and you can hunt it down. But of course, hunt, you know, either typing it in fully by yourself, or typing in the first couple letters so that it narrows it down, and you can hunt down the rest from there, are the two fastest ways to do it that don't consume too much time. And now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do a full name equals string with a capital S. Notice how this one has a capital S and these are, one second, my bad, stupid intelligence, uh, concat. All right, so real quick before I go any further, notice how this string right here has a capital S, whereas this string right here has a lowercase s. That is because lowercase s strings are variables, whereas an uppercase s is calling a library called string within the system library. So, moving on, we have string.concat, which is short for concatenate, which means to merge two things together, which is exactly what we're going to do, and then we're going to type first name, and then put a comma, and then quotes, space quotes, because we want a space between our first name and our last name, and then we're going to do last name, 
and then close the parentheses, and that's all you got to do for that. And now we're just going to have the uh, the computer return it to them. So we're going to go console dot right line parentheses hello. Put a space, close the quotes, add the full name, space, and then add. Um, it's a lovely day outside. I don't know. I know it's kind of dorky, but um, I'm just trying to fill something in there. So we can do console dot read next. And the reason again why we do console dot read, and I can't emphasize this enough is because the program interprets it the way you write it, so if you don't put a break, it won't put a break for you. And it'll just close out the window before you can get a chance to view your work. So that way it gives it a pause, and the user actually has to manually push any key whatsoever to, uh, well actually has to push a return key of some form to, uh, to con can't close out the program, if I could speak. So let's go ahead and run this test program real quick. I'm just going to drag it over to your screen. And as you can see, it'll ask you to enter your first name. I'm just going to put Riz, and then your last name. Hit return, and you can see it returns the first name, then the space, then the last name, and it looks relatively flawless. So, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to show you about um, IntelliSense, the the neat thing that you can do with it, I've mentioned it briefly before, uh, where if you type in a method and then you push period, it'll allow you to actually wade through, but if you leave your leave your cursor over a certain item, so say you want to do string.compare, you can see it's an int string compare, that's the method type, and if I can get it back here, it tells you string index da 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 and it says it has nine plus or plus nine other overloads. Overloads are simply, for instance, the concatenate. Um, the regular concatenate would be just two variables, but I went to a separate overload, overload number two, by adding a third variable. And if you actually you you start entering the information on that, you can wade through all the different overload methods. So. You see, you can see concatenate um, overload one is just odd, um, an object with an argument. Uh, that would be, for instance, if we just had one item, and then o overload two, which is what we were using, and then we have string values. So if we were to use a string array and compare the two arrays of strings, then that, that would do that just fine for you, and so on and so forth. And you can see that there's 11 different overloads for concatenate and every single one of them has overloads so if you if you need to know whether or not you can use a certain um, overload style or a certain item within a library to to do what you want to do the best way to do it would be to type it in and then try entering in the information and then wade through the overloads until you find something that you want most uh, that will work with you and if you don't find it well then it's time to try a new method so that's it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.